Greetings and salutations. I wanted to take some time to talk about some awesome art I found. Oh, it's from a Swedish guy. Don't hold that against him. The art is, uh, is actually pretty good. His name is Simon Stalin Stalinhad. Stalinhad. This is art that I can actually enjoy in the way that you hear art majors talking about enjoying art. Um, for example, it speaks to me, you can say that. Uh, it's a true portrayal of everyday life. Uh, it shows the struggles of artists during their journey. But only the difference here is it's not a bunch of pretentious jerks singing praises of vomit on a canvas. Quite literally, somebody ingested paint with, I think it was soy milk, and then spewed it out on a canvas, and somebody loved it. Amazing. Why well, I like this art, and what I mean by I can actually relate to it is, I can recall the weekends when it was easier for all of uh, my friends to meet up in person and link our computers than it was to gather on the internet. Believe it or not, some of my friends still had dial-up internet or no internet at all. I also remember looking out the window on the long car rides with my parents, seeing images in the distance that I didn't fully understand, which allowed my imagination to run wild. I remember wondering what mysteries lurked within my electronic devices. What made them tick? This wonder is what eventually led me to stray from my parents' supervision long enough to open one up. A chance to explore. I, of course, used tech that nobody wanted anymore. I walked around the neighborhood during trash day a few times and, uh found old electronics to take apart. When my parents caught me opening up one, they they were a bit upset because they thought I was destroying one of their one of their expensive devices for the time. But after I explained where I found the stuff, my dad came with me for the next time. Trash day rolled around. By the way, the names I have been presenting with, the images are not the titles of the art. They are simply the default name that you get when you save them from his, his website. So, a little FYI. <clears throat> what really caught my eye with this art will likely catch the eye of anyone who was born from 1980 to 1985. I'm sorry, 1980 to 1995 in part due to the fact that the artist set his work to reflect that time period, uh, and also in part due to the relatability of the tech in the drawings. <clears throat> the Hacking the Loop drawing, sometimes my my face doesn't, doesn't move right. I gotta touch my brain a bit. Pulls it back. The Hacking the Loop has caught my attention particularly because of the Compact Desk Pro 386. Um, it, it looks similar to me. The Desk Pro 386 has that name due to the Intel 80386 microprocessor in it. This was back when product names uh, actually meant something. This computer, by the way, back in 1988-1889, had an entry level cost of $7,499 with an option to upgrade to the 60 megabyte built-in hard disk to a whopping 130 megabytes for only an additional $2,000. That is not adjusted for inflation. That was the cost back in 1989. For a laugh, check out this archived New York Times article hosted on their website. Links in the description below. Of course, I did not have the computer when it was top of the line. It was lent to me by my uncle, along with an industrial robotic arm. I used the computer to write programs, save them to a floppy disk. 
execute them, watch the machine move around, oftentimes not doing what I wanted it to do. Rinse and repeat. At the time, to me, it felt how I imagine programming, hacking, the robot in the per picture would feel. It's surreal, exciting, uh, just plain fun. Looking at the art brought back memories of the hours spent in my parents' basement playing with the robot arm my uncle lent me. So to me, that is what makes this good art. I actually plan on buying a, at least a Hacking the Loop print from his website. Uh, I plan on grabbing one there. Perhaps a, uh, ooh, I don't know. Maybe a canvas style. Yeah. I don't know, make it feel like art, but uh, I don't know. I don't know yet. Not sure if that's the best medium, so the kids say. Uh, he also has some books out, which seem to take you through each art piece and explain how they build off each other, telling you the story of the art is based on. Um, I'm not exactly sure. I don't have them yet. I may have to put the two books he has out. Uh, he still seems active by the way. Uh, his latest book was published on November 1st, 2016, and he seems to be working on another book that he is kickstarting, titled The Electric State. It was funded with all of its strep goals met. Neat. And it looks like the movie rights of the new book have been sold to the Russo Brothers Studio. <laughs> Round of applause for that. I'm that, that would be neat if that, if, if the movie with that art came out, that would be kind of cool. The Electric State looks like it follows a girl and a robot around, and they try to figure out what went wrong in humanity. Looking at his website and on the art kind of gives you an idea of what that would be like, and it's kind of, it's really cool. I, I, I think the Electric State thing is pretty neat. Simon taught me that art has many forms that are not appealing to everyone. I am appreciative that he was able to make something that has invoked memories and emotions in me. Uh, I hope he's able to do the same with you. Till next time, I'm the Ill-Informed Human.